So my name's Ben. A little bit about me is I've been in the DME business for about 18 years of my life. Um, I started in it uh, basically out of desperation, right? I needed a job. I didn't have one. And I, so I, I was fortunate enough to, I worked in many different uh, DME companies. And once I learned the business, I, I, I really found a passion for it. And uh, one of my favorite things in the whole world to do is to uh, allow people and help people be more comfortable in their home, whether it be you know, a piece of durable medical equipment like a hospital bed or a walker or a cane or a fancy pink walker um, to get them to be a little bit more mobile. Um, I found that passion based on my own mobility issues that I have. I, I don't get around that well either uh, sometimes. Thank you. <laughs> and, and so that's I why... Sure, yeah, yeah. I'm, I used to be a professional faller, right? I used to, I'm so good at it, uh, you know, and, and I, as I've gotten a little bit older, you know, I've, I've learned how not to, not to do that. Um, and it's all about being, being careful and being cognizant of your surroundings, right? So that's a little bit about me. Um, we're going to go on to the presentation. So, um, with every presentation that I do, I always try to put goals out there to that hopefully by the end of the presentation, we'll hit all of those things and you'll leave maybe a, a little bit better for, for it. Okay, so, so when you're using your, your piece of equipment, you, you always really should be thinking about safety, right? There's a reason why you use the walker. There's a reason why anybody uses any type of walker here because, or cane. Um, because they need it. And if it's not up to speed, and if it's wore out or uh, things like that, um, you know, safety is at risk. So we want everybody to be safe, okay? It should be in good repair. So your brakes should always function on your four-wheeled walker that you have there, both ways, up and down, okay? You push them down, they should lock the wheels so you can turn around and sit down on that type of walker. And if you squeeze, in case the walker gets ahead of you, you want to be able to slow that down. Okay, yeah, so you then you're... Yeah, up here, I was sitting in my old walker. Yeah. And I put something... No, I was sitting in a chair at the computer, mm -hmm. and the, I leaped, bent over to pick something up, and the chair went zoom right yeah. underneath me. Yeah, that's what that that's what the happens. Got to be. And the walker did the same thing right. at Walmart. Yeah, you got to be careful, right? So, I always tell people, you know, look, it's going to get beat up if you use it, and we want you to use it. That's, I mean, we we want you to be out there and be active as possible, right? That's the whole point of this. Instead of sitting on the couch or or lying in bed, these, these modalities, these things help you get out and about and come to the library and read a book or go to a restaurant or whatever. We want you to use them, but we also want you to be safe and always do periodic inspections, right? So when should you do periodic inspections? Well, I would suggest that every time you use your, your piece of equipment, it doesn't have to be like a detailed inspection, just look, oh, the caps are wore, or, or what have you. I mean, it takes about 10 seconds, you know, to look and see. Um, and then we're going to show a little bit about proper use. Now, I will say that um, I'm not terribly good at actually using these yet, and I, um, I, I will as I, as I need them, um, you know, when I get older. And I'm, always, I'm already warming myself up to the fact that at some point, I will be running around with a uh, hot, uh, or no, like a cherry red walker, perhaps with some flames painted on it or something like that. That's, that's what I'm shooting for. And at some point, uh, that will be me, okay? So uh, we talk about assistive devices. So let's talk about the cane here for a minute. And, and there's a video, so, so if you don't catch all of this, this will be okay. Um, the cane, it, it can be a number of things. Uh, we just talked about wooden canes. 
And, um, but these are all canes, these fancy canes, these different color canes are all available for sale where I work and probably any other uh, store that you might go into. Uh, the one that I brought, for example, has, it's orange and has flowers on it. Some people like those. Um, the, the cool thing about the aluminum canes, right, is that you don't have to be right the first time when you measure, right? With a wooden cane, what happens, right? You don't, if you don't, if you don't measure twice or three times or five times or what have you, what happens? Too short. Too short. Wooden canes don't adjust. No, they don't, and I'm having an issue here with my eyes. There we go. Okay. One of the things that I've noticed, uh, I, have, um, I have a member of my family who, who, is, uh, who, who now needs uh, one of these and one of these. And what I've noticed as I've been checking up on him uh, more frequently um, is this little adjuster screw right, is usually down here every time I see him, okay. And we're going to talk about that. What is that thing for? Right. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the rubber caps too. But I wanted to hit this because this actually is a screw, and I don't want to move because the, the camera's right there, but um, it's a little screw that tightens this down, right? And what that does is if you know, you know about canes, right, there's a little pin here that adjusts this thing up and down. Well, that's not really held in there by anything but a spring and a, a, like a piece of brass, right? So think about this for a second. <clears throat> if this is down, and let's just say that this is adjusted correctly, right? But for some reason, I decide to put like all my weight here. That's going to, all the weight is going to be right on that pin, yeah. okay? So, and I've caught him, I've caught my, my stepfather twice like this. And every time I'm like, hey, hey, let's, let's put this back. And I've had no less than three people in my store in the last three weeks with canes. So, you know, it's making some kind of noise. Well, it's right down here. It's very simple. Something very simple to do and check for. You want to make sure that that weight is is secured by that screw. Otherwise that pin shears and you got a worthless cane, right? So other than that, we're to talk about the rubber tips. These are also available for sale at my store, but these things wear out, okay? So I'm going to tell you a quick story because um, that's what this is all about. So years ago there was a time I actually broke my foot, right? I broke my foot uh, uh, for some reason, there was a, uh, a forklift that ran over my foot at work, and I broke my foot. So it was at like 3 in the morning, and I went to the emergency room, and then they said, well, if you need a cane, here's a script for a cane. And I didn't know anything. I was about 19 years old. And I'm like, okay, where can I go for, for a cane? And so I went to the local drugstore that opened at about 7.30 or 8.00. I waited outside in my car until they opened, um, and I hobbled in. Even worse than I normally hobble, I hobbled into the store, and I said, I need a cane. And they said, okay, it's not covered by any insurance. I said, well, how much is it? And they said, it's about $20. And I'm like, okay. So I got this cane, and I used it, used it, used it. They showed me how to use it. And I wore, I used it so much that I wore the tip out, okay? So back when I was about 19 or 20, I had no idea that these things existed except for on the ends of canes, right? So I didn't know that I could buy another cane tip for like 50 cents or a dollar, right? So I jammed a bunch of cardboard in there and I put the tip back on thinking I was gonna get by. Well, I wonder if you can imagine what happened. Right. It, it wasn't very smart, and then it wasn't until my dad saw it, and he goes, what, why, didn't you just, why, why didn't you just buy another tip? And I said, really? And then we walked into the local Walgreens store, and I'm like, oh, well, look at that. I had no idea, never paid any attention to that stuff, right? So these tips, um, 
they are available at SSM Help at Home, but, but these need to be looked at. I would look at them every time you use your, your device. I mean, it takes five seconds to go, oh, yeah, we're still good, right? Um, if they wear out, get new ones. They're cheap. And if, especially if you think about what the consequences could be if you don't get new ones, if they are wore out. I mean, I, th I think uh, something like this would sell for maybe three or four dollars, you know. So please do that. How do the chips come off? Um, well, okay, it's a great question. Let me tell you how they come off, usually with my hands. And what happens is somebody brings in a cane and they say, I can't get the tip off, and I need to buy a new tip. And I said, here, let me have it. And then I take the tip off for them, and I put the new tip on. So that's something that we can do at our store. Do they screw on? No, no. They, they're, it's, it's just like a, a, it like slips on. That's all. I don't so know the if I can. The rubber itself. Yeah, the, right. On. The rubber itself is what keeps it on. They don't, they don't screw on or anything. But, and sometimes it can take a little bit of work to, to work it off. That's why I get a lot of people coming in with, I say, can you help me? And I'm like, sure, I'll be glad to. That's, that's a fun part of my job and, uh, to meet those folks, right? All right, what else can we tell you about canes? So they do come in different circumferences, right? The, the, the actual uh, width of the, the roundness of the cane. You don't want something too narrow because then you might as well, you know, have a stick. Um, you do want to have something that's, you know, wide enough to, to help you with what you're doing. Now, remember that canes should never bear your entire weight, right? They're, they're there to assist you moving forward. They're not there. So we sell bariatric canes with, um, for example, weight capacities up to 500 pounds. And under no circumstances should anyone put that much weight on, on a cane. However, we're required to um, make sure that they could do at least that. All right, that's why we, you know, we ask and if it's needed yet. Yeah. They're also very heavy and they're wider. And um, so um, they can hold a lot. The aluminum canes are strong, make no mistake. Um, wooden canes, I honestly, I think I got the right button here. I said they're, they're available for purchase. Okay, so the average cane, um, 36 inches about. Up with the aluminum canes, you can adjust with the wooden canes. You got one shot. I um, I think they're really cool, to be honest. You can get fancy, you know, different cane heads and animal heads or whatever, and they look really neat. Um, maybe when you're going out on the town, you, you, but I for general everyday use, you want one of these things. Maybe silver, maybe black, maybe flowers on it, like this one. Um, I think for general everyday use, get yourself a nice lightweight aluminum cane. And if you're going out to a fancy dinner, and if the weather's not too bad, uh, perhaps you can use your fancy wooden cane with the eagle's head on it or something like that, right? Buffalo. Buffalo. The, one I had, that was my dad. the buffalo. The buffalo. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's pretty so, cool. So yeah, but you know, again, we don't sell those. Um, at our store, and I, I think you'll see possibly Walgreens. I think you might see a wooden cane or two. Um, my but, pharmacy sells them. I'm sorry. My pharmacy. Oh, your pharmacy sells them. Um, the reason that we don't is because um, we don't have a hacksaw. Right? We don't. We we don't. So we don't do the the measuring and the cutting. And I I wouldn't want to. You know, for a twenty dollar cane, all of a sudden we cut it too short and. Then, we got to get another $20 cane, so then we're, we're, we made the mistake. So, yeah, we just, this is your cane. Um, whatever color this is, we adjust it, and if we make a mistake, we fix it, and here you go. And I think you'll find that uh, a lot of places, like our place, do just that, right? And you, you, can, you can get a wooden cane from your pharmacy or Walgreens or something like that, and you measure at your own risk, right? Most people use um, walking sticks. Yeah. I'm just curious yeah. about the, the handle. Yeah. 
Um, do they come in, like, like my husband has a great big hand because oh. he's a big guy, and I have this little itsy bitsy hand. I resemble your husband. Okay. With my, with yeah, my, yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, if we put our hands together, his, his sure. fingers are way up here. Oh, yeah. And so does the, is the handle different on some of them so they're bigger or he, more comfortable to hold on to? Sure. Um, he'll, he'll that handle. Yeah, see, that's a little smaller. So yeah. that would be more comfortable for me, but probably not so much for So, me. So the, these, now... These canes, that, the cane that I brought is basically a one size handle and I have hands at least as big as your husband's, uh -huh. most likely, Probably. and um, this would be okay for me. Um, okay. So that's something, I don't know if you want to take a look at it, I can bring it over to you. I can oh. get up just a second here anyway, um, take a look at that. Yeah. And if that would be something. It feels big to me. Yeah. And so I, that. That one felt a little, hers feels, it's a little small. See, and I'm stretching that. That's a nice one. Actually, I, I do like this. I, I like this style. Mm -hmm. um, nice. We actually have maybe one or two of these in stock. Oh. For some reason, they don't sell uh, as much as canes that are shaped like this. Okay. And I don't know why, but this is great. In fact, this is the one I have at home that I use when I feel like I need to use a cane. So there you go. Thank you for that. All right, so this is not actually measured correctly for me. I'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but I thought it was a neat color that catches the eye, so I brought that along. And so some of this is common sense, right? Uh, modern aluminum canes can be easily adjusted. Which, and you've heard me talk from the beginning, I really like aluminum canes. Why? Because if I make a mistake, and as a manager of the store, I don't want to hand out canes for free, right? If I make a mistake, I can fix it, and I can still sell it for brand new, yeah. <laughs> right? And, you know, like I said, if you buy a wooden cane, you have one shot. I would recommend, um, again, using a wooden cane for your fan. As long as you have it adjusted right, uh, don't use it every day. You, you, it, I would recommend getting, these are cheap. Well, this is uh, 30 bucks retail. If you are interested in anything like this, you can say, hey, I know Ben, and we can do something to help you out with that price, too. Um, we, we do offer, uh, normally we do offer a 20% coupon oh. off of most things if, if it's mentioned. So that's why I like the aluminum canes, because they're, they're idiot-proof like me when I, right? Okay. So... When we talk about walking with a cane, and I, I can do some of this, but this is very basic. And I bet you, I don't know if you know this, but does anybody know the side of the cane that you should hold, the side of your body that you should hold the cane? I hold mine on this side. All right. So my question is, is it the weak or the strong side? Like if you have a weak leg or an injured leg, what side of the body do you think you should hold the cane on? See, I would think it was to, would be to support the weak side. Right. Yeah, a lot of people do. Yeah. It's, you actually want to put your cane on the strong side, right? And if you think about it, and I'm going to try to do this, I will say I'm not very good. Um, I'm just going to move this up just a minute to see if I can adjust it to be more appropriate for my height. Um, but there's this wonderful lady on YouTube that I found. Uh, named Dr. Joe, and we'll watch that video, um, who will show you exactly how to walk with a cane. Um, but basically, think about this. So when your foot is forward, so let's say that my, I'm left-handed, so I'm going to just say that my, my right leg is the weak leg, right? So if I move forward, is it normal that my hand my left hand oh, goes forward, right. right, with my right leg. If you, if you walk back and forth, you'll notice. Nobody notices because we just always do it, right? So now what? Now I have the cane down with, my, with some of the weight on the cane, my weak leg, right? So it's taking some of the pressure off my weak leg. I move forward, and let's see if I can do this without falling. 
It's always following my weak leg. Okay? That helps distribute it. So now you have the weight on your weak leg and the cane, right? It helps distribute the weight. So that's why um, it's always recommended to put, your, put the cane on the strong side of the body in the arm that follows the weak leg, right? Why do you have two weak legs? <laughs> then, then we move to these walkers. So if, if you have, and we'll talk about walkers in a minute, but walkers are for people that need more support. Like, for, like I think of, of somebody like me in a, in a few years, um, you know, time catches up with everyone. And in a few years, you know, I, I, I would be, well, not the pink so much, but I would be, you know, <laughs> I, like I, I said, would, claiming. I would take the pink. Yeah, no, that's and that's why we sell. People, people like the I'll pink. I'll take the pink you can yeah. have this one. <laughs> Wait a minute. How many miles are on that one? Let's ask that for a second. My daughter bought it from the front of hers. Yeah, OK. So um, and then just what, I, just what it says here, move the cane and the weak leg forward um, at the same time while the weight is on the stronger leg. All right? So that way it distributes not only the, the, the weight, um, and all of the weight is not on the, the one side. So you have the weight on the strong side and the weak leg at the same time. So it, it actually does two things. It helps distribute the weight, but it also distributes the weight this way. The, 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 right? right? So you're more stable. So it's just like I showed, showed you before. If my right leg is weak, I want the cane in my left hand, right? And I think I probably, just so full disclosure, right? I worked probably three years in the DME business before I figured this out. I was like, well, it only makes sense to put it on your, on the weak side, but then you're putting all of the weight on the cane when you're walking, right? So if, if, if you're walking and this is your weak leg and you have the cane on the weak side, you move forward, it's, Na not natural to move the hand on this side and your foot on this side in the same way, right? It's more natural if you walk, and this is not natural, by the way, but usually your arms are swinging with the opposite hands, right? So it makes sense, then, if my right leg is weak, that I would swing forward here. You see how that's a line? You, this, the tip of this cane should always follow your weak foot. Okay, so if I move forward, I'm going to keep doing that, okay? And that's basically, it spreads, it spreads the weight, right, which is good. So that's how you walk with a cane. It's just the opposite side of the weak leg. So the other video I was going to show was how to safely walk up and down stairs with a cane. The cool thing about uh, walking up and down stairs with a cane, not that it's not challenging, it certainly can be. But when you're walking up and down stairs with a cane, and there's no stairs here for me to show you, so I, ho I hope we can uh, get access to the video. Um, it doesn't matter what hand the cane is in, it's going to be in the opposite hand of the railing. Oh. Right? Okay. Because what you're doing is you're bearing weight on the cane and the railing, okay? And you never start with your injured leg. Okay, you, you start with your strong leg, and then you, it's hard for me to explain without a set of stairs. But um, that's the one difference when going up and down stairs is you put the cane in the opposite. You, you, first of all, you shouldn't be attempting stairs that does not have a railing if you're needing a cane. Um, I don't usually do stairs without railings. And I wouldn't suggest to anybody. That's just a safety thing for me. I know there's stairs out there without railings, and they, there shouldn't be. But um, always in the opposite hand. So don't try to, if the railing's on this side, don't put your cane in this side just because this leg is weak. Okay. Put it over here. Use the railing. Now you have two hands that can help, two arms that can help support the weight of your body while you can't support the weight of your body with your weak leg. Um, if we can get the video to show, you'll see that, okay?
Now let's talk about fun stuff. Walkers. Walkers are fun. So all of these colors of walkers are available for sale at home uh, at SSM Health at Home, including the fancy one, the fancy uh, pink breast cancer walker that I brought for uh, demonstration here. Um, and the two most common are the four-wheel and the two-wheel walker. And I have the two-wheel walker there. Okay, this is some regular uh, everyday stuff that most people probably know. They're mechanical devices for ambulatory people who need more support than a cane. If you think about it, that makes sense, right? Does that make, that make sense to you? If you have one point in the ground, that offers some support. What if you have four? You know, I mean, the, what's a lot of support, right? I actually, you know, I, I know of people that actually use this for exercise. You know, I mean, I'm a, I'm a heavy guy, right? And it's going to hold me up. Um, don't do that, really. But, I mean, it will. It'll, it'll hold you up. So if you need more support, like, like me, um, with just general weak legs, this is going to be good because I'm just going to move forward. The thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that it's adjusted appropriately, okay? And you want to stay, you want to stay inside the walker about, about like so. The thing about adjusting is, is a good rule to start with is if you can see here, right about my watch is where you want the top. So if I'm standing here, the best, the straightest that I can be, you know, which is not very straight. Right. right this, is, this is a little bit short for me. This should be raised up a little bit because I want to have that right about here. And what that allows is a little bit of flex in the arm to be able to be strong enough to put some weight on the walker, right? If you don't want it too short, then you're hunched over, yeah. right? You don't want it too tall when you're up here. You want it just about that, that nice angle where you feel comfortable and you can support yourself. That's important. If it's not the right height, um, sometimes it won't do you any good. Now, there, there are certain, I will say that there are certain um, people with, with issues, with posture issues and things like that, that we can make exceptions. So the most important thing to do is to listen to your doctor, whatever they suggest, right? So, but that's what this is, and this is cool because um, for somebody like me that might have just generalized weakness in the legs, a cane doesn't do me any good. I got bilateral weakness, so oh boy, I'm gonna use two canes. No, that's exhausting, right? So I'm just gonna use something like this or even better, this flaming red one with the, with the flames yeah. at some point, right? I'm just going to be like, you know, this should be raised up a little bit, but this is nice. You know, um, it's funny. The other day I took my, my father grocery shopping, and he won't take the walker with him. He needs to have the cane, but then when he goes grocery shopping, he uses the cart, and there I am holding the cane. And I'm like, well, this is the only way this will work because I always push the cart because it's a big store and I get tired. Um, but if I have his cane, we're okay. So it worked out well. Um, and so a grocery cart can be kind of a walker too. It, it sort of it distributes your weight, gives you support, and meanwhile you got all your groceries in there. And so that's kind of how I get away with not using a walker now is because if we go to the grocery store, I'm holding the cart and I'm okay. Um, but this is great. So now if this was a four-point walker, let's just, ex uh, for example, uh, this and this would just be points, right, without the wheels. You would, this is why I say they're exhausting, right, because you would lift, step, take two steps, and that's the kind of walker. Right. right. And there might be uh, people that absolutely need a four-point walker for stability, right? where all they can do is you know, put their weight on, maybe with both feet down, move. And it's stable. I can take a step. 
But um, I would say that 90% of our walkers like this are two-wheeled walkers that we sell. Um, so I, I don't know that I've sold a four-point walker uh, since I started at SSM Health and Home. Right? You don't see very many of them. Right. Uh, so we do now. They, this, this. So let's talk about safety here. So they have these little plastic caps, right? So these spin, and then these glide on the carpet. These will wear out. These will wear out so much, and people don't pay attention. And they sometimes people don't um, do their periodic inspections to where it, the the metal is actually being chewed up. Right? And then they'll come into the store with these half legs and they say, hey, can I get a pair of slides for these legs? And you, you can't do anything, you know, really for them. You could try. Um, you know, sometimes we have to sell them a new set of wheels. Um, it's just, that's the, the thing about not doing periodic inspections is they come in beat to heck. And um, that's why I want to encourage Everybody did. Every time they use something, take a look. Um, we have some things, and you can get these at any store, I think. We have um, things called skis, walker skis, and I will say they're, they're, I think, four or five bucks is what we sell them for. And I would recommend something like that over the use of tennis balls, which I don't recommend. Um, I know people like them. But I would say um, they get the, the little green fuzz everywhere, and they do wear out. And they're not. I say they wear out pretty quick. Yeah, they wear out quick. Um, and actually, tennis balls are probably more expensive than the skis that we sell them. So get the skis; they'll last a lot longer. It'll save your walker, and then you won't have to come into the store and say, "Hey, can you take this off and put these on?" And then I. I have to take it in the back and find the vice and do all that stuff. Um, periodic inspection saves the life of your equipment. Okay? And then acting on those inspections, right? You want to do that. More uh, aluminum standard, right? Four legs, rubber tips. That's not a, that's a standard walker. Um, and I'm in the shadow, so I'll get out of the way here. Most walkers have adjustable legs. The one you have don't doesn't, right? Doesn't have adjustable legs. No, yeah. the one you, the 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 one like this you have. Oh no. Right. It's so it's, you. It's a real old fashioned. Right. So you have the unicorn of walkers, <laughs> right? I you don't. To yeah. See, <laughs> well, it's good to have a purpose for those things, right? <laughs> All right. The most common is a two-wheel walker, like I just demonstrated. Um, like I said, always, always look, at, you know, whenever you use it, make sure your skis or caps or whatever you have. Um, you could flip the front wheels around if you got real narrow, uh, real narrow doorways to where they're on the inside, okay, if that's an issue. Uh, we don't normally set them up that way, but you can if you got narrow, narrow uh, doors. Some have four wheels, handbrakes, and a seat. Okay, this is fun. This is pretty easy to explain. <clears throat> Walking with walkers. Move the walker ahead about six inches, like I, I showed you before, with your body weight, when your body weight is on both legs. Okay, so um, that would be for this one. But this one, uh, I'm going to kind of skip forward through here. Then move the right foot up, okay, the right or left, depending. I just kind of put it in order here. Right and then left while your body weight is on, born on the, uh, by the right leg and both arms. So really what these do, and then here are some videos that maybe we'll get to. Um, the cool thing about these walkers, and I already know that you know this, look at all the stuff you have, right? This allows somebody who needs a little bit of assistance getting around, they can still carry things. I have people that put their little uh, oxygen tank in there, oh. right? And the cool thing about, about those customers is they can do that. They got it going to their, uh, you know, nose, and then they're walking, and then they're like, oh, 
I need to take a break. Okay, so I'm going to take a break. They put the brakes down, and then they can uh, take a break. I do that a lot. Right, and do you always put the brakes down? Yes. Okay, good. That's what we like to hear. So uh, the, the brakes here, they go down to lock. Right, so this saves me from having it go from under me and falling backwards and hitting my head and having a big mess. Or you can squeeze them if it's getting ahead of you, right? Or if you're going down a, uh, a declined surface, it's good to keep the brakes so that it doesn't get ahead of you, right? Um, these, are, these are great little walkers. The cool thing about these walkers and I didn't do that safely. Oh boy, the cool thing about these walkers is, say I'm, I'm fairly short. These here are adjustable to where the seat can actually go down further to the ground or higher, oh. right? So we, we have these in stock, and this allows somebody who, who might be a little bit short because uh, shorter, what you don't want to have is having the feet dangle. That's never good. Never good, right? Right, right. So this is a fairly new thing. This one only goes up. Yep, yep. And we, for years, sold, sold these walkers that have static seats. The seat is the seat is the seat. Right. And on this one, this is the original seat with this one. It's not? No. Okay, so you got a new seat put on there? No, I was from my old walk. Oh, okay, you just swapped seats. Because the uh, original seat that was on this one, it, it, it was about that thick. Okay. So it brought your feet up. You brought your know. feet up low. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's the nice thing about these walkers, is that really, uh, we can adjust the seat up and down. We can adjust these here. The handlebars to make sure that they're appropriate and um, the brakes if I want to sit down you lock them in place you, now we have these in our showroom and every day I need to see I seem to need to go by and close because what happens is if you keep them locked over time you'll get that little mark in there on the wheel so you don't want that so just if it's on a flat level surface let them be. But your, your walker should stop if you squeeze. And when you sit down, you, you do that. And that's really all there is to it. Obviously, you're going to want to come in or have it looked at if all of a sudden you squeeze the brakes and you keep going. Right? Um, these things are meant to be used, so wear and tear will happen. Right? Everything that's used and moved eventually sort of kind of wears out. So you want to always be looking at making sure your brakes work. If I would recommend anything, if I'm going to use the walker for the first time in the morning, squeeze the brakes. That's as simple of an inspection as you can get. Squeeze the brakes, make sure it stops. Now there's a little bit here because of the plastic on the wheels, but really, um, push them down, make sure they lock in place. Um, that's something that I watch for really closely in our showroom of when they're trying out these walkers. Oh, I'm going to sit down. Okay, put the brake, lock the brakes. Let me show you how because I don't want anyone to have this thing go and then they're on the ground and that's no good. And that can and will happen if you don't um, use these simple, you know, safety precautions. So um, without the videos, that's really what I have. Um, I, I just wanted to yeah. add, if I could, sure. we had um, um, someone come in, I think it was last spring or early mm -hmm. summer, talking about adaptive gardening techniques. Sure. And she brought in a walker mm -hmm. that was made all of PVC pipe yeah. that was to be used in the garden. She says the ones with the four wheels sometimes will do pretty well right. in grass and... Depends on your size of your wheels. It does. It does. But she says those type, they get stuck in the oh. grass and the dirt all the time. You can use them at all. 
but the PVC yeah. has just a, it, it's, the bottom is square, and okay. so there's nothing to get Yeah, out. gotcha. Yeah, she says they work pretty well, apparently, yeah. but so there's got to be patterns out there. Patterns out there. So we have, um, we have something that's kind of neat now, and you know, they're not covered by insurance, but they're, so picture something like this, but um, if I was to turn around and sit in it, it has handles um, that somebody could push me. Oh. Right? So in order to do that safely, um, it, needed, it needs to have feet rest, foot rest. So these, they swing out. You can put your feet down here. They have handles here. And it turns into kind of like a, a little, little wheelchair. Yeah, I can yeah. see. Those, those are pretty cool because it, it allows, if I get really tired, I don't have to just stop and rest. I can stop and my caregiver, my, my wife, my husband, whoever, can keep going, right? Um, and that is also something fairly new. We have two of them in stock if you're interested um, <laughs> at my store. So, um, yeah, the, the uh, bigger wheels, uh, I've seen carts out there like with a tractor seat, okay. you know, with big knobby tires. If you, you know, I've so so. There's ways of doing things. You don't have to not do gardening, or you don't have to just stay at home. You know, what I really like about my job, and I said this before, is trying to get people to not only be more comfortable in their home, uh, but also not to to be part of making sure that they do the things that they like, you know, and not being held up by whatever physical things that might stand in their way. Our, our job is to try to move those barriers, you know. And that's what I really like about my job. So, um, so questions? I think you've been asking questions all, all <laughs> the whole time, so that's okay. I think I might just go back there and see. see how, do you, how do you... Okay, guys, um, I have um, uh, the Mercy Mall yeah. check my walkers. Okay, good. But with this walker, I don't know if they would or not because I didn't get to the phone number. They could, I mean, they should be able to look at it. I mean, to, just to make sure it's safe. I think it's safe. Let's take a look. What about your brake? Do they work? Can I see it for a second? Are you going to be okay? Yeah, you can see. So that, that holds pretty good, right? There's nothing loose or rattling there. See, this one grips a little better, but I mean, the wheels aren't turning when they have the, the brakes locked down like that. Mm -hmm. I think that's outstanding. And how old do you say this was? I don't know how long my daughter's friend mom may have been. Okay. This is a real nice one. Um, yeah, so this looks like, I mean, it's got some stuff, but I mean, it looks like you've been taking good care of it. The brakes still work, and that's the biggest thing with these four-wheel four walkers, is that the brakes need to the always be that, working. The only thing that, what, okay, what are these things for? The screws that hold the mechanism in place for the brakes. Okay, because... I know I've noticed that not not these, but these they come loose. Yeah, you just I don't have any tools with me, but to take a screwdriver and just tighten them down, like these are. Okay. But but okay. The, it still works. Uh, Phillips head. Okay. But the but the the cool thing is that the brakes still work. You know, I mean it's it's. It's in remarkably good shape for what, uh, honestly, for what it looks like. It looks like it a little beat up, but uh, I would think that it's certainly safe to use. Oh, I'm getting that's, in my apartment already. Yeah, it's that's great. That's great. Do you have any other questions? I don't want yeah, so uh, really I did, uh, there's, there's a lady named Cindy from a, a company called Adaptive Equipment that is really good at showing specifically how to use 
these pieces of equipment. I really like the way she does it. She's a, she explains it very plainly. Um, but that's what I got. Um, she asked some questions. You got anything? No, I can't I, think of anything uh, now. I, it was very interesting. Thank you. It yeah. was. I I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed giving it.